All right. Hello, everybody. How are you? Sorry, I don't look the, my best self. Um, it's been a long day. Um, um, I was just doing meditation and prayers, but also crying a lot. Um, especially because there's a lot going on, okay? But one thing he kept telling me, that remember you have a message for the community, and I do, and I know I keep my promises, okay? But it's interesting because he asked me to gather enough um, video. So today is going to be kind of like um, a psychic message, a Columbia message, but also a spiritual uh, news um, because this is the actual news that should be out there, but it's not. And this is the truth that he wants you guys to, um, you know, have with you, okay? So if you feel inclined, which it does help, okay? to like the videos comment and share okay it does help the algorithm so it can be spread more okay i'm trying to spread it here it's just it's it's, it's very difficult because everybody else on youtube is just focused on on other bs other than the fact that we're dealing with a genocide and yeah this is what's going on right now so I keep seeing this question be asked and it's never in good faith. They don't want a real answer because to get a real answer would just take a few critical thoughts and they don't want to do that. But I'm still going to answer it. And that question is, why does everybody care so much about what's going on in Gaza and not what's happening here in the United States? What is happening right now is a global rise in consciousness. And events like this tend to do that. It is an awakening. So the system here in the United States is built and designed to keep you lulled into submission and to keep you quiet and to keep you distracted. So you're like this hamster on a wheel. You go to work, you pay your bills, you're tired, you get up and do it all over again. And then you have this insatiable need to consume, consume, consume. There's a bunch of distractions thrown out there for us to keep us not paying attention to what's important, like social media, like Hollywood, when something this catastrophic happens, which is the killing of children, innocent men, women, and children, the collective is like, this is wrong. Why is this happening? And you snap out of your trance, of your hamster wheel that you were spinning on. And then once you're snapped out of your trance and you're looking around at the state of the fucking world around you, and you're like, this has to stop. Which begs the question, why isn't this stopping? You start to find the answers. Because most of us on that hamster wheel, the issues within the system weren't really touching us. We were a cog in it, but they weren't really affecting us too negatively for us to be uncomfortable and feel some type of way. But anybody who is part of any group that has been oppressed in the United States is very well aware of all the problems going on. It's that middle section of us that are just on the hamster wheel asleep. So what happened was Gaza woke us up. And not only did they wake us up and we're just mad about what's happening in Gaza, we're all connected. Oh, you've got billions of dollars to send to a country that has free healthcare, free schooling, subsidized housing, they're living their life. And we're sending them billions of our tax dollars to fund that and to fund the killing that we are all awake to saying, hey, this is wrong. You're using my money to do it when I can barely afford rent and groceries. We've got a homeless problem. Then you realize how the corruption of our cops is tied to the IDF and them training our cops. And then you realize how everybody in our government the Zionism runs deep and it's just another version of white supremacy. They're all the same. Democracy is dead. When moments like this happen, it snaps us out of our trance and we start asking questions. And then we start seeing things around us. So your question is kind of ignorant because you're saying, why does everyone care about what's going on in Gaza and not what's happening here? You haven't been listening. You haven't been listening to the conversation because the conversation's not stopping at Gaza. In fact, one of the rallying cries is, free Gaza, free the people. 
Freeing Gaza is the heart of global change. It is the heart of freeing us. So, yeah, sorry, just my sweater says, okay, I'm trying to cover it, but uh, whatever. Um, there's worse things in the world than just a uh, minuscule swear for real. Um, so, yeah, that's what's, uh, that's part of it, okay? They're going even harder right now. But one thing that I'm just going to um, make it clear for a lot of y'all that uh especially the spiritual community and they all like you know your tower reading and stuff like that like i know you watch me okay all i'm gonna say is that remember that time when you were censored uh when you started your youtube channel right when you were censored that your videos were getting tamped down that youtube was doing stuff to your videos and stuff like that remember those little people that you're kind of like you know they're asking you now to help us out right now because we are there is going a cyber war right now that they're trying to censor and 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 literally um allow people to buy propaganda Zionists is literally the nazi so a lot of y'all you're dealing right now with what your ancestor dealt in the past and you're not doing anything so it's kind of like hypocrisy 101 massive here where now we're asking you to do, to help us to do the exact same thing that we did for you when you started your channels, right? Now you're thriving, you're doing all these things, right? But now we're asking you for help and you were nowhere to be found, right? You're silent right now, right? So this is what's happening to the Palestinians right now. They help everybody, they help their own people, their colonizers 75 years ago, and this is where it's going on, right? Now they wanna wipe them out, okay? I don't want to make this too long. There's a message, but also he wants me to include the videos. Okay, so this is other one. Want to start a revolution? For real? Stop participating. Stop agreeing with what they have conditioned you to agree with. If we don't think a big house is cool anymore, guess whose big house isn't worth anything anymore? If we don't think that the TV shows and the movies and the celebrities and all the things that they have us conditioned to think are cool, we don't think they're cool anymore. If we don't think the materialism is cool anymore, guess what's not cool anymore? Say no. That's the revolution. Say no. So I'm just gonna say that the love and light community and like you talk to ancestors, like it's ridiculous that you're telling people that you're reading their ancestors, their ancestors is trying to tell them something or blah, blah, blah. You're not even connected to your ancestor. You're not even helping right now. This is what's happening right now. What happened in the Holocaust, what happened to the colonial situation. And this is the energy that he was explaining to me. And I'm so grateful that he, I'm so like, I'm connected to him because this is very hard. Like the videos and the pictures, and it's not that I'm feeling so tired because my mental health, honestly, it's fine. You know, it's better than, you know what I'm saying? That than them. And I honestly, I wish I could trade places. Okay. Cause they don't deserve that. They don't deserve that. They don't deserve that, that. Also that too, it's like, I feel it. Their energy, being an empath, like this is why, like I feel it 10 times fold than anybody human, okay? And I can handle it. So if I can handle it, when I feel it in a fucking genetic DNA level that I'm literally, when that I see a mother or someone like literally seeing their child dead and murder, I feel it as if it was my child. And all I can think of, how can I send strength? How can I send them, you know, how can I, how, how can we help? Right away, you take action. That's what we keep saying. True love takes action. People who don't have love in their heart, they are ignorant. They're, they're completely silent. And he kept saying, silence is violence, Angie. Violence. And now I have a message for you too. The day of judgment that you go to God and he asks you, and he has a list. He knows who has been silent right now. He knows. The same thing with the Holocaust. The same thing. Because it's the same energy. He's going to ask you, what did you do by the time when the Palestinians need help? What did you do? Oh, no, I thought, uh, you know, that's their karma. You know, because what they did. Let me just tell you. I keep saying, if you look back into all the videos, I've been posting this and I've been talking about this. Because it comes from the Most High. He keeps telling you guys. Hamas, yes, it's the resistant group. But it was like, what, 13, 10 people? 
they already they already done that like October before October seven, by the way, like way before October seven. Everything has been planned. Everything has been their propaganda and their agenda. Now their agenda is propaganda, massive, you know, using celebrities, using other people. Yes, using you to keep you quiet. So a lot of you, I'll know that you're getting paid to stay quiet, right? Actually, not me. God knows. I'm not here to judge no one. All I know that he kept saying to these people, Angie, speak this. He said, that day, when you say, especially because today I got so, I was like, oh my God, right away I don't subscribe and I don't follow this person. The fact that they have the audacity to say that whatever's happened in the world, it's some type of situation or some type of karma and blah, blah, blah. I was just like, oh my God, I can't. October 7, he kept saying that was planned. There was no Hamas. There has never been. It's all a lie. All the babies capitated, the rape and stuff like that. It was not true. So a lot of you, you live in that lie, that bubble, that illusion, and you think you're woke, right? You think you're awakened. No, you're not. Especially you're not doing something to help us out right now to help cease fire in Palestine. You're not woken. You're fucking pretending. You're fake. And you're disgusting. And if you're here, may God have mercy on your soul, okay? The Israeli military shot women, children, and babies point-blank execution style at the Shadia Abu Ghazala school in Gaza. Israeli tanks were pushing their way into the city, so people ran into the school to take shelter. Once the Israeli military withdrew from the area, people ran into the school looking for their children, only to find their dead bodies. This Palestinian woman told Al Jazeera that Israeli soldiers stormed the school, took the men, including an elderly man, and then opened fire on everybody else, which again is women, children, and babies. And if you look behind this man, you can see that the school building has been completely destroyed. Sometimes I feel like when we talk about this stuff, it's not actually registering what that means. They shot point blank at children, at babies at women, at humans. This is exactly why they not only target journalists, but they also cut off the internet because they don't want us to know what kind of heinous crimes they're committing. And the most embarrassing part of it all is that our government vetoes a ceasefire. Our government supplies, funds, and supports all of this. And that too, I was one of those people who was, I didn't have much uh, P going on in my YouTube, you know, and I was helping all of these Tower readers, all the spiritualists, everyone right now who has huge amount of platform, I was helping all of them. That had a list. Those who went to my Red Ocea, I, mean, I had a list of all the people I helped for the past maybe five or four years. They're thriving, they're doing well. And now the little people who help them to be where they are, are asking them to help, just to post, just to help out. That's it. You can be in your comfortable home. Your privilege is disgusting. This is for you. Can we for one second not prioritize mental health when it comes to a humanitarian crisis like what's going on in Palestine? Can we not say, oh, let's just ignore the news because everything's so depressing, let's look the other way. Nothing is going to change. Things are going to continue to get worse if you guys continue to try to ignore it to preserve what little peace in your life you have left. Because boy, I'm telling you right now, things are going bad everywhere. And unless you pay attention to it, the worse it gets. Like, dude, I get it. I get it. I get what it feels like to want to get away from it all. But to completely ignore things as bad as this, to prioritize your mental health because you just can't handle it or you're just not smart enough for this topic, fuck out of here. Especially if you're a POC. Because, boy, I'll tell you, this has everything to do with you. Because there will always come a day when we get screwed over too and we asking the entire world to stand behind us. Just because things don't directly affect you doesn't mean you don't need to get involved. Now, nowhere to be found. Nowhere. Now all you gotta do is boycott all these companies. That's all you gotta do, right? But it's more than that. It's more than that. But boycotting, just announce it. Put the company out there. You can put it in your little community board, say I'm boycotting McDonald's, boycotting Starbucks, boycotting this. I'm telling you, we'll make a difference. You can save a Palestinian life right now. Empathy. A lot of people lack that. I'm not those one of those people.
I'm going to say something controversial. Remember, your cognitive dissonance will attempt to deactivate your critical thinking the moment that you're triggered. I am not trying to offend you, but some of y'all need to be upset. Every single U.S. citizen is an addict. You don't have to be addicted to food. You don't have to be addicted to sex. You don't have to be addicted to the gym or your coffee. You are addicted to your comforts. We are all addicted to our comforts. And this is why we won't see change the way that we need to at the pace that we need to because nobody wants to give up their drug. And when I mentioned having to sacrifice our comforts for change in my previous video, some of y'all were like oh but jasmine i could eat rice every single day and walk everywhere if it means change for palestine and change for the world babe you need electricity to make rice you need running water to make rice you need structure tools some sense of security whether you're inside of a building or out in the middle of the fucking wilderness you have to make sure there are not missiles flying over your head you have to make sure that you are not actively within a bombing zone there are so many things happening but because we've never experienced it we can't conceptualize it I kept wondering as ruthless as the u.s can be why is it that they've allowed us to keep our comforts? Because as we are watching genocides in 2023, they're using it almost the same way we use baby content on this app as birth control. You hear a baby scream crying, you're like, oh fuck, I don't want that. You see people actively without their privileges, their human rights, their comforts in life, and you go, oh, blinders on that's not affecting me so i'm not gonna speak about it just think about what happens when tiktok is not working when we all fly over to twitter and go what the fuck is going on and we're losing our shit for four hours we don't know how to even be without the internet so imagine being without our everyday comforts not being able to shower not having eaten not having fucking slept we're going to turn on each other y'all are not getting the bigger picture here because i think y'all think there's like an end cap on a revolution like or on genocides or war or whatever i know y'all think it's like oh two weeks of misery no babe there's there's no end in sight until there's a fucking winner. And because we know somebody has to lose, we don't even want to join the fight. Now, there's a scripture he wanted me to tell you just to remind some of you. He's trying to calm me down today about this, but there's this message that he wants to put out there for you, okay? And it reads, I put it already in the community uh, this morning um, because he just gave it to me so that I can, you know, continue this work. Honestly, right now, scriptures just gives me, it's like, it's like soul food. Okay, not that too. Like, I'm not even hungry anymore. I'm not thirsty. That too. He says, he keeps telling me, and you have to eat and drink. I understand that you, you know, like I, even drinking or anything, like knowing that they are not have access to that, that a little girl Age of my daughter, die of hunger. Hey everyone, it's been 68 days of continuous bombing, um, starvation, continuous displacement. And talking about starvation, I'm now telling you that people are now dying because of hunger. People are dying because there is no food. The day before yesterday, yesterday a child, a little girl died in a school where the humanitarian aid trucks must go, where the food must be distributed. She died because of hunger. In Khan Yunis, in the south, she died inside a school, just just 20 kilometers away from Rafah crossing, where the, the, the aid trucks and the food enters Gaza. In the north of Gaza Strip, now this is in the south, there's no food, either in, in the schools and distribution and then the, from the organizations, the, the um, UN organizations or any other agencies, or in the markets. And in the north, in the north of Gaza Strip, yesterday, a family ate a donkey. Yes, yes, hundreds of people in the same family not find anything to eat, um, any vegetables, any canned food, any meat. They ate a donkey. Okay, for, for, for you, if you don't know, for us, this is really like ridiculous. How, how can anyone eat a donkey? People are dying because of starvation and because of thirst. There is no, there is no uh, uh, water. Either clean water to, to drink or even dirty water to wash, to, to do anything. There's no water, there is no food. It's been 68 days since the, the last time people felt that um, they're not hungry, they're not thirsty and they're safe. There's no water. There's 
Israel has told us that once the so-called humanitarian uh, pause would cease, that they would immediately pick up their bombardment campaign and concentrate on the southern parts of Gaza. And I insist on the fact that Israel has already displaced 1.7 million Palestinians from the north, pushing them into the south. And that in this moment, as Israel has told us that it will continue its genocidal campaign in the south of Gaza, what they are saying to us is that they are going to airstrike the families who have been displaced from their homes in the north, along with the families who also live in the south. And so what I fear is that what we have seen in the past six weeks is going to be far superseded in this moment in brutality, in destruction, in killing, because of the fact that Israel is focusing its mammoth airstrikes, its brutality, its destruction on the very areas where the families are sheltering and there is no safe place to go. They are not allowed to escape Gaza. There are absolutely no safe spaces in Gaza. Every time I am on the phone with my family in Gaza, I can hear the drones in the back on the voice notes on every phone call. So it's very important for us to understand that what Israel is doing right now is a genocide. This genocide is the latest aspect of its colonial violence and domination of the Palestinian people in a 75 year long ethnic cleansing campaign to ethnically cleanse all of Palestine from Palestinians for the benefit of the settler colony. And we must strongly condemn this. We must strongly reject this. Beyond straight crime, it's a genocide. It's a genocide absolutely in the legal definition of genocide in accordance with the Rome Statute and also the Genocide Convention. Genocide requires intent and action. Not only have there been over 100 statements of genocidal intent expressed at the highest levels of Israeli military and government since October 7th, but they are also clearly committing three of the five genocidal acts under the international treaties. This is not my opinion. This is the opinion of over 800 genocide scholars, over 47 state crime scholars, and numerous scholars of genocide who have come out in this moment and said that Israel is committing genocide. Not only that, but the annihilation phase of genocide. That's why we have seen a sustained campaign of international actions brought before the International Criminal Court, attempts to organize now and, and lobby for a state to invoke the Genocide Convention before the International Court of Justice, attempts brought in the U.S. to sue the Biden administration for violating their obligations under the Genocide Convention. And we still have the audacity to say that we, we can't do anything? That it's too complicated? No, it's not. It's not. This is not about you. It's not. Anyways, he says, and through your offsprings, all nations on earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. Genesis 22, 18. That scripture was personal, but I felt like he was just saying, like, you can put it out there with the video. But it was personal for the fact that I know that in 50 years, 60 years from now, if I make it, Glory be to God. That my kids are going to, if they ever ask me, or even if I, when I'm the day of judgment and God asks me, what did I do? I'm, I'm going to die in a happy conscious. I'm going to die very happy. Because at least I did something for other people that wasn't for myself. That I decided to betray my soul and sell my soul for bullshit. Because right now is bullshit. And that energy of someone said that consumerism equals distraction, it really is. And they're using it to, the, uh, to their advantage. And those who are doing readings and people are watching you, learning from you and spirituality and stuff like that, you have a responsibility too. But it's just sad that you have literally wasting it. And think it because you're all the way there. You know, you have money. Same thing with the prophets. I'm not leaving you behind. The same thing with the prophets, right? The prophets with your ministries, right? With your large subscribers, right? You can voice for this, right? Either you're a Zionist, Christian, whatever, evangelist, whatever. Which basically is consistently a Nazi, Okay. Or you just really, you lost it. You just, 
anyways those the same thing they, they they don't have a heart they don't have a soul anyways let's get to the message but you know i've been mia for two days but my phone was messed up i'm back and i want to talk about the rain that i'm seeing falling right now in gaza as you know many palestinians have been displaced they're living in tents and because of the heavy rainfall there's a lot of water and mud entering their tents one woman showed the inside of her tent saying that they wanted to go to sleep, but with the water coming in, it's almost impossible. We also have kids who are wearing flip-flops in the freezing cold while it's raining, having nowhere to sit because everywhere is wet. And every time I feel like I've seen it all, I'm reminded that I haven't. Some areas completely flooded, and this is a young boy carrying a child through the flood. Earlier this morning, Bassem Youssef went live on Instagram with Matez and said, we don't know what to do. We're posting, we're making noise, but what can we do to help? Matas said, right now, it's not about money, it's not about food, it's doing what we can to make this stop. Every morning on my Instagram stories, I post a link where if you click it, all you have to do is put your state and your zip code. An email pops up with a template and you click send. We have to do this every single morning until they get sick and tired of it and things start to change. So let's please continue to do our part Call, email, do whatever we can to continue to ask for a ceasefire. Now, he wants to give you this guy's this message, but I don't want to take away the, the videos, okay? So in the description below, there's going to be their links to access their video on their TikTok. I would really appreciate it if you go and like the videos, comment and share it, okay? Or you don't even have to share it if you don't want to. You can share it maybe like on your WhatsApp status if you have WhatsApp, okay? You just put it in the status, okay? Help us out, help us spread the, the words, okay? Because right now we're dealing with big, big, huge guys who have money and stuff like that and are making up lies and talking shit while we actually have people on the ground dealing with genocide okay trying to risk their lives so that we can have the truth the information and then all we have to do is to share can you imagine that's all we have to do and not only that you can also call your representative you can do stuff okay boycotting Go make a list of Palestinian stores that you can like support and stuff like that, online or offline. I don't understand. And I guess I don't have to. I, all I have to do is just let you deal with your karma that you think that other people who are suffering in pain are dealing right now. That is not true. That is called injustice. That's oppression right that's why supremacy in the flesh so what happens that's what i'm saying like you're fighting in the spirit like all these people talk about spiritual warfare they're going through spiritual warfare the spiritual warfare is right now the one that you deal in a couple months ago the spiritual warfare that you were talking about and your spiritual dreams and all that is happening right now in the physical where are you we're supposed to be in the front line all this light worker talking fucking kakalaka right now where are you First of all, you lie about the spiritual warfare then. And you also lie about a bunch of fucking shit just to get fucking likes and views and subscribers, right? Yeah, I'm calling you out. I'm calling you out. I want to offer something hopeful. I see a lot of helplessness and lack of agency and fear, right? What are we going to do? Look what's happening to Palestinians. They're not listening to us. They don't care what we say. They don't care what we want. You have AI coming in, taking over... Um, jobs in the future, everyone's like, what's going to happen when none of us have jobs? And we just see this totally dire future of uh, everyone having to live in the streets and no one can afford food and inflation's out of control and it's all price gouging and these companies are making record profits. What we always forget is that we, the people, always are, when you look at us collectively, by far the most powerful agent in these systems. The system of capitalism, especially late stage capitalism, where we're at now, it's not as smart as uh, it makes itself out to be, right? As the Elon Musks of the world and Jeff Bezos's uh, try to make us think it is. It has a lot of hubris. It has a lot of audacity, a lot of confidence that is ultimately unfounded. Because what happens when all of these consumer product goods companies, for instance, are using AI to create all of their products and they no longer need employees? 
Who's buying the products? Who's buying them? With what money? Right? (laughs) If we get to a point that these companies cannot make a profit because no one has money or jobs to buy the things that they're making, it all falls apart. This is why right at the beginning of the pandemic, the government was like, oh shit, we gotta just give everyone money because people couldn't go to work and get paid. And they knew, they didn't give us money just because like, oh, let's make sure we keep a roof over their heads and we care about the well-being of these people. No, it was because they were terrified of the economy collapsing because we weren't spending. Also, they could then turn around and blame inflation on us when it's the majority of it is price gouging, but we're not going to get into that. It's all about us. It's always been us. The whole thing relies on us. And what's funny is even if we don't make a collective effort to divest from the system and we simply are exploited by it to the point that there's nothing else that they can suck out of us, it will collapse under its own weight, all on its own, without any help from from us choosing to do that. So if it got to that point, right, the government surely would step in. We were all shocked when they stepped in and gave everyone money. That We were like, what? Where did this money come from? They can just do that? Yes, yes, they can just do that. And guess what? If you have an economics degree, you already know this. But this idea that the number of jobs that need to get done, like the amount of work that there is to do, is somehow equal to the amount of money that the general population needs to put food on the table and roofs over their heads, is completely untrue. Now, not a lot of people frame that fact that way. It's just an implicit belief that everybody has, right? There's a certain number of people. There's a certain number of jobs to be done. No, a lot of, a lot of jobs, there's entire industries <laughs> that don't need to exist. It's all just people coming in to make money off of each other and circulate money among the wealthiest people and, and find ways to hoard and accrue wealth to the people who already have it. It's all just a big system, a big Ponzi scheme to do that. At a certain point, right, every Ponzi scheme (laughs) falls apart. At a certain point, you have people at the bottom who are putting so much more in than they're getting out. It falls apart mathematically. So just keep in mind that we have all the power. And as we go into this holiday season, maybe it's good if we remind them sooner rather than later of just how much power we have. We do not need to buy as many of the things that we buy. And we can go local, we can create things for each other, we can do things for each other, get more involved in our communities, our buy nothing programs. I mean, there's a million different things that we can be doing. We do not have to keep living these individualistic, nuclearized, consumerist lives. One way or another, they're going to come to an end because fewer and fewer people can afford these things and these comforts on their own. But never forget, we have all the power. The AI takes over all the jobs. Who's buying the products? Let's get to the message. But I'm telling you, I'm like, tear apart and, and, and the fact that, that there's no heart for other people to do this, to help out, it's just incredible to me. So I'm tired. All I'm going to do, I'm going to educate and I'm going to help those who care. If you care, if you made it this far, thank you so much. Thank you for helping, liking, commenting, and sharing the videos, helping those in the description below, okay? Please help us out, help us release the content, get into the fight. This is a, this is not just a spiritual warfare, but also in the physical. It's both together at this point because right now they're trying to eradicate Palestinians, okay? Jesus descendant, yes. This is their agenda, okay? And we are Christ consciousness. We, the real woke ones, okay? The real light workers, I'm calling you. The real empath, okay? I know a lot of you, you're trying to avoid the videos. You're trying to avoid that. We don't have time for that. We don't have time. You're not dealing with what they're dealing, okay? Please. You can take care of your mental health. You can take your therapy after. You can do whatever you want once this, the permanent ceasefire is done. Once the, the genocide is stops, okay? Please. You know what blows my mind? 
The Hunger Games is such a popular, well-loved movie, and everyone is very understanding of like why there's a revolution and very in support of the districts revolting against the capital. Like everyone's team Katniss, right? No one is like, oh my god, go capital. But when that shit's happening in real life, when there's real life oppression happening and oppressed people are fighting to get their land back or to get their rights, everyone is suddenly, oh my god, it's too complicated or why are you using violence? Why not love? love? It's because they're not white. It's because the people of Palestine are majority Arab with an African minority. They are not white. And therefore, a lot of people in the West, particularly white people, cannot relate to their struggle because they have completely dehumanized the people of that region. No matter how many times some person gets on here and says that Israelis are indigenous to that region, we know that the majority of the people living in that area that is called Israel today are white. And we know that the people living in Palestine, in Gaza, and in the West Bank are not white. Now, black people have been dehumanized and caricaturized for as long as media has existed. But since 9-11, and probably before then, honestly, there has been a pretty aggressive campaign, not just to dehumanize, but to villainize Arab people and Muslims. And yes, again, not everyone in Palestine is Arab and not everyone in Palestine is Muslim, but this is what we think of when we think of that region. And ironically enough, audience reactions to the Hunger Games, specifically the Rue character, articulate my point perfectly. In the first Hunger Games book, Rue is described as having very thick hair and dark brown skin and eyes. The Thresh character, who is also from District 11, is described as having dark brown skin and like golden brown amber colored eyes. This, coupled with the fact that District 11 is comprised largely of dystopian sharecroppers, made it abundantly clear to me and most Black people who read the book that Rue is Black. But then, when the film adaptation of The Hunger Games was released and Rue was Black, a lot of the readers who had previously loved this character and were saddened about her death in the book lost their shit. All of a sudden, these people felt bamboozled. They felt deceived. They said, but Katniss said Rue reminded her of her sister, neglecting the fact that Rue and Prim are the same age, that they both have a very sweet, gentle disposition, that Katniss feels comfortable around them, and that maybe it's these character traits that reminded Katniss of her little sister. The cognitive dissonance made their eyes bounce right off of the physical descriptors of the character and cling to some delusion that she must be a white woman. And when her skin and eye color were pointed out, these people would remark on some Spaniard or Portuguese or Italian person that they knew who had thick hair and dark eyes and who could tan to a very nice bronze. Suzanne Collins got a lot of grief over the Gru character and she actually had to give an Entertainment Weekly interview stating unambiguously that the Rue character was African American and so was everybody else in District 11. The way that these white readers reacted to discovering that Rue was black, even though this had been made explicitly clear on the page, was as if they had been tricked. Tricked into what exactly? Tricked into caring about a black person, even if that black person was a fictional character. This is why the same people who could have an outpouring of support for Ukraine, even though that country actually is at war, it is a separate sovereign nation with a military of its own to fight Russia, could not find any compassion for the Palestinians who don't have those things. This is the reason why some celebrities put pictures of Gazan civilians on their social media with the captions, pray for Israel, and then upon finding out that the pictures they had posted were of Gazans, removed those captions and any sympathies. The reality is many people enjoy media like the Hunger Games and similar constructs of an oppressed people rising up against an oppressive force and winning a revolution because it allows them to cosplay being the marginalized and persecuted class. This is why even now the very group of people who are oppressing and carpet bombing Gaza are claiming that they're the victims. A lot of people enjoy consuming media where a white person rises up and fights for their freedom because they believe that freedom is an inherent right to white people, but that being subjugated is the natural order for people of color. 
you're never going to convince a group of people who are attached to the idea of their own supremacy that they could ever possibly be in the wrong. The reality is that Suzanne Collins was a white woman who wrote a book about a white female protagonist, and there's nothing wrong with that. I, have, I find no fault in anything that she did. However, if the Katniss character had been a black woman, especially if Suzanne Collins herself were black, it would be a completely different reception to the book and to that character. The Katniss character wouldn't have been seen as feminist and revolutionary. She would have been seen as a terrorist and an agitator. This is why we currently have a group of people whose largest crime is simply not dying quickly and quietly enough, and they're the villains. Like a lot of you, you're obsessed with yourself, with your pride and your arrogance. It's disgusting. Please. This is why a lot of us, we're going through this ego death and it's like we're feeling alone, or, but you're not alone, okay? A lot of you, if you're understanding this situation and you're here and you're helping out, thank you. The Palestinians, the, the people from Congo as well, we can't let that go as well. There's a Congo, there's Sudan as well, okay? We're doing all of them at once. And guess what? Yemen right now is our hero and they're like we don't care if you don't want to give us food it's okay we'll deal with it they are the only country helping palestinians right now and making the israel i live in fucking hell and that's nothing compared to what's coming to them i'm telling you they're gonna pay for it Whew, it's gonna be good and i can't wait for that day to happen i know we're not supposed to boast about it i know we're not supposed to be happy about it but i'm telling you that day when that happened, that Egypt and Israel, um, the Israelites passed that 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 water. I I feel it. I know it. That they felt some type of happiness when that water crashed on all these uh, Egyptians, right? They're not supposed to boast about it, right? But I bet you were happy that your oppressors finally get their fucking karma, and they will. I'm telling you, they will. You want to know why? Because we're gonna make sure of that. Why? By saving the evidence, by saving the truth, by knowing the truth, by teaching and educating others, by debunking, debunking the propaganda, okay? Calling it out like it is, all right? Not staying silent, not staying ignorant like those people who think they're all high and mighty and offering you and selling you shit and this and that and courses and tower reading and blah, blah, blah. Those people, I'm telling you, they're going to meet their maker too, okay? Because their silence is violence. Listen, cognitive dissonance is very real and it is a psychological effect that happens to your brain where your heart tells you something but your body does not move with it. And when you're sitting here and you're telling me that you are pro-Palestine but you cannot boycott companies, it is one of the easiest ways to protest. Literally one of the laziest ways to protest. You are not leaving your house. You're not spending your money. You're not putting your life on the line. I mean, you got people stopping cargo ships and you're telling me you can't stop buying from fucking McDonald's. Like, be real. You've got small businesses that would die for that $10. Literally, they would beg you. They advertise for those $10. They wish they could have those $10, 3 4 $5 every day that you spend on these companies that are sending aid to Israel, that are Zionists, that are doing all these things. With your consent, by the way, they are literally verbally saying, we are doing these things. And you are seeing that and you're saying, well, I can't stop it. Yes, you can. Just stop spending your money there. People are giving you alternatives to buy on, which is crazy to me because why do you need alternatives? You have everything you fucking need, real life. If you want to support Palestinian businesses, you are doing nothing but literally helping your little bit of dollars that you think means nothing because it gets out of your pocket very fucking easy. They want you to feel that way. But all those little dollars with all of us, billions of people, turns into millions of dollars that they have been able to send. You start to wonder, oh, these big companies have so much money. Where the fuck did they get it? From us. They didn't just get it out of fucking thin air. If that were the case where everybody would have a company, everybody would have a business, and we'd all have millions of dollars. That's how shit would go if it really was like that. But our money means something. Our money has value. And to sit there and say you feel helpless, and in the same breath say you cannot boycott, you are having cognitive dissonance. Look it up. And for the same thing, for a long time, people were talking about how they hate living in rural America and how they hate every landscape looks the same and how they're taken over by these big, huge monopoly freaking companies. 
Meanwhile, you've got people who want to open up new businesses, start new food, stuff like that, and they're having little to no support because you're so used to buying the same shit every single day that you're not willing to try something new because, oh, just in case it's bad, you can give them criticism, you can help them. Every time you help someone in your own community with their own business, you are helping yourself, your community, and that person literally directly impacting them. They, I've, I've gone to small businesses that they told me every time I tip them, you're helping out with my kid's college fund. You're helping out with my family. You're helping out with this. You're helping people fight diseases. For, and on top, talk about diseases. You got a country over there, Israel, who's getting aid from us. They have free health care, top third health care in the world. While we sit here and have to pay every little penny for every little medication down to fucking just if you have a hairline crack in your bone, you're paying over a thousand dollars. And you're sending money over there. And while we're sitting here eating shit from these big fucking companies and having to go to the doctor to fix the shit in our body that's been eaten. And you're telling me you can't boycott these things and help yourself and save yourself every dollar you fucking save from these companies. You are directly saving someone else. You really are. And it may not seem like it, but we can sit here and circle jerk and talk all day long to other pro-Palestinian people and virtue signal and do this and and say and not be about that action. Sure, another thousand people just fucking died while we're sitting here wasting our breath. We need to literally deplatform them with our money. With our money. All that money that you guys earn that you guys talk about is so hard to earn because it really is. This country has made it so hard to earn money and have a livable wage. And you're going to sit there and use that little bit of money they give you and give it back to them? Cognitive dissonance is real. Please check yourself. As much as you want to hold people accountable, you need to hold yourself accountable as well. We need to defund these companies. You have to understand how important your dollar is and 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 to make yourself feel better and sleep at night and unfollow this and unfollow that but you're not gonna unfollow your favorite company and and take away your money from them be fucking for real bro all right the message that he wants to tell you guys and that's just for you okay he said do not lose composure or take easy path that's what they're doing this is not easy i'm telling you this is not easy this is work okay Emotional, physical, financial, spiritual, in every possible way. Because that's how God went through it. Remember he said to pick up your own cross, right, and follow me? This is it. They're being called right now and they're not doing anything. But if you are doing something, you care, you have empathy, and I'm telling you right now, it's going to be rewarded 10 times full. Okay? But you shouldn't do it because you're getting something in return. Just so the fact that some uh, Palestinians is alive because of you, that should be enough for you. Because I don't think you understand what these people are going through right now. Okay? Especially the hunger. They're trying to kill them now, not only with hunger, with thirst, and then constantly bombing them, constantly, you know, and especially they told them they were in a safe place and now they're bombing that place. I'm telling you, this is not, this is wrong. And by the way, those who are in the States, uh, this is for you, okay? My fellow Americans, I have a story to tell you. The other day in Gaza, a father of seven was um, hiking towards safety after many kilometers with his seven kids. And he was stopped by Israeli soldiers. You, with the beard, over here. He went over and they started to interrogate him. He said, I'm just trying to get my family to safety. We're tired, we've been hiking a long way, we just wanna to get to safety. And the Israeli soldier interrogating him smiled and looked at him and said, I have a gift for you so that you won't be tired anymore. And then he shot him in the head and smiled and said, now you're not tired anymore. This is the utter depravity that comprises the Israeli occupation forces. This isn't just somebody who's pushing a button on a bomb and doesn't know who they're hitting. This is someone who's looking an innocent man in the face, in front of his children, and then literally murdering him for no reason. And this, this is what you're supporting as an American. This is what your president is supporting. This is what uh, all of our Congress people are supporting. This, this is utter brutality and it is it's literally a war crime and it should be a war crime things like this should never happen uh 
we, we need to wake up and we need to realize that as we grew up listening to stories of the Holocaust and the brutality of the Nazis, and we questioned ourselves, we said, why didn't anybody stand up? Why didn't people stand up and fight against this? That time is now. That time is now. And the question is, why aren't you standing up and doing something to end this murderous regime? Because I have a lot of people from the States. Most of my people here who watch me are from the States. But also, this also relates to Canada as well. I know, Canada, you don't stay really behind, are you? After 66 days, you decided to finally take uh, your money. Or that you say that you will take off your money because you're a motherfucking converted narcissist, are you? You know how good you can make a nice face, but you're fucking over people in the back, right? Right. But we see right through you, right? All I hope is that whenever you ask for forgiveness, I just hope that you forgive our student loans, right? And then we will be able to forgive you, you know? Because I know that you're using our tax money, our uh, loan uh, paying back and stuff like that for this fucking bullshit, right? And then acting like a victim. Yeah. Yeah. Also, now you're trying to buy us with uh, some kind of pocket money, right? Government money and stuff like that. We appreciate it. Thanks. I mean, it went everywhere into paying you back your bills and stuff like that. Capitalism, fucking bullshit hypocrisy, right? And also is paying for genocide that we are not agreeing, we are not consenting off, right? At least those who care, those who actually have empathy for real. Now, he said, do not lose composure or take the easy pass. It may lead you away. It may lead you away. Instead of closer, which eventually can and it will destroy you. Keep praying and keep digging into my word as it is your shield during this time. So a lot of you, if you read the Quran, that's also another thing that I learned as well. Quran has different uh, structure, but similar to the Bible. So he's asking you uh, to go deeper into the Quran, but not forget, obviously, that, you know, we have the son of God, right? Same thing with the Torah. Like he's not separating anybody here, okay? Everybody can do your religions or whatever. But at the end of the day, he wants you to have, like I said, he talks through scripture. He talks through numbers. He talks to other people, other messengers, other earth angels, but the real ones, okay? I'm telling you, he's making it easier for you to cut off energies right now because it's just inhumane not to care right now. And if they do, that gives you everything you need to know about those people. Do you understand? Same thing with boyfriends, girlfriends, friends, or whatever, okay? They're silent right now. It's too complicated. Oh, I don't want to mess up my feet. Oh, I don't know. I don't want to get too involved. Uh, the neutrality is, is, is dead. During this time, it's dead. Whatever is happening in the Palestine is happening to all of us. Do you understand? This is something that it could happen to us. Also, those people, if ever shit goes down, they're not going to help you. They're telling you right now. They're not going to help you. If everything goes down, they're not going to help you. Do you understand? Those who are doing this type of work, we will. Because we're together, united. This is Christ consciousness. It, the, God never said it was going to be easy. That's what he's saying. Don't take the easy path. It's up to you. You can follow those people if you want and idolize them and all that stuff. But I'm telling you right now, cut it off. They're cursed. For real. Okay? And they know it. They know it too. That, that's why they, they're sending and projecting energy because they know that I'm literally calling them out. Yeah. Until they, they show up. Because every day you can redeem yourself, right? Alhamdulillah. Thank you, God, for giving us that beautiful energy, that sacrifice. Because every day is a new day. Doesn't matter when you show up, as long as you show up. He keeps saying today, uh, it's never too late. It's uh, better late than never. Better late than never. So that's for some of y'all. Okay? Better late than never. If you're just starting right now, it's fine. Just get going. Just join us. We need all the help that we can get, okay? This is a crisis. This is a humanitarian crisis. This has nothing to do with religion. This is nothing. This is about humanity, okay? And it's specific, a very important humanity, humans, okay? I'm telling you.
I'm telling you. He said, Word is that it's your shield during this time so that you'll never be deceived by false doctrines. Okay? Do not be anxious about material possessions. Remember what the world offers is temporary. I repeat, remember what the world offers is temporary. All this distraction, all this BS, all these people offering you products and come buy my products, come buy this, come buy that. Like business as usual, tower reading as usual, right? Spirituality, yoga, your coach retreat, whatever the fuck as usual, traveling as usual. Doing a genocide, that tells you everything you need to know about those people. Don't trust people like this. I'm telling you. Jeez, remember what the world offers is temporary. While, while what I offer is eternal and filled with blessings for your life and those connected and connected to you and it's meant and connected and meant to serve this lifetime. Remember, it's not just about you. You are connected to other souls that you're meant to help as well, that you're meant to guide. We all connected. We all little guides of to other people. We all lessons to other people. I'm a fucking lesson to all those other people that are not doing shit right now. Okay? And I could just imagine, like, I just imagine God watching them, like, really? Really? Like, disappointed, you know what I'm saying? And I feel it, too, because it's like, it's like, you know when you go, when you do a project, like, in school or something, and you have a group project, right? And you have all these uh, couple of people that actually doing the work and stuff like that, and then you have, like, one or two that they're just not doing anything, and then when the moment of the presentation, they show up, like, uh, you know, they act, like, as if they did all the work, but you guys did all the dirty work that they now are taking credit for, this is what they're doing. Because eventually when we're all done with all this work, they're going to do that. They're going to try to do that. But this is why God is saying, I need you to cut them off before the blessing comes in. Because all of y'all are going to get your blessings. But you need to start cutting these people off. I'm telling you. He's been telling me this for, for days now. And I have to be obedient. I'm telling you. Because whatever is coming, they cannot. You need to remember those, what they did. You need to remember the actions. Okay? Because this is what happened with the Holocaust. They forgot. They said that this will never happen. And look where we are now. They're doing the exact same thing. Now it's even worse. Now we're watching it in our faces. And some people aren't ignoring it because, ah, oh, that's too much. I can't really. Oh, no. Oh, really? Ah, oh, que lindo. Oh, how easy. How easy? Taking the easy path. Anyways. He said, continue to have faith in my promises and everything will come in divine timing okay he said i'm never delay or forget also he's never changing we change all the time but guys say stays consistent he doesn't change he's still the same he still loves you no matter what he even loves those who are not doing you know what i'm saying but hmm, he has a limit you know what i'm saying that too and there and he's reaching it and hmm. I'm always delighted to meet each of your needs, okay? Do not despair or worry or doubts or fear. So I feel like this is for the people who are watching me from um, the Middle East, okay? And dealing with stuff, okay? He said, I'm always delighted to meet your each of your needs, okay? So for a lot of you, I know you feel some type of shame because you had a donkey, okay? I feel like that was him <laughs> trying to help you. I cannot imagine the despair. <laughs> I'm strong. I'm strong for you. I'm strong for Felicity. I'm strong. I'm strong. We are strong. We are strong and we're here to give you hope and not to lose hope and not to give up because we're not giving up. We're not. Okay, sorry. Go. Ah! Okay. Do not despair or worry or doubts and fears, okay? And they know this. I know you know this because I read the Quran before and I know that you know this, okay? I've never been more close to the Muslim community for the past two months than I've ever been in the Christian. God, what a disgrace.
Anyways, no doubts or fear, okay? Because that's what the enemy is, is, is seeking, all right? He needs to feed off that. We cannot give into that, okay? We have to outcome above that, okay? With tears, with pain, with everything. Just remember how Jesus was carrying the thing and people throwing rocks at them, doing all these things, okay? It's the same thing. Just keep going and do what you need to be doing right now. That is our mission. That is our, our legacy that we're going to leave behind because we are doing this work not for us, it's for our kids. I know I'm doing this for my kids. And to set things straight because no Jewish do this. No Jewish people do this. No. This is complete Zionist, Nazi, crazy psycho people. And they're going to pay. Oh, they're going to pay. They're going to pay for that. Do not despair, worry, or die of fear, for I am with you. God is with you, okay? With all of y'all. That's why it's hard to hear him. That's why I, that's what I'm telling you. Not prophets right now. It's very hard for them to be listening. If they're not fasting, if they're not, if they're constantly on their YouTube and just for their money, I'm telling you, they're not hearing God. They're hearing the counterfeit. And he's making sure that he's pretend they're making the pretend because that's their life. They're fake. So when you're fake and you pretend, that's who you listen to. And he's doing it to distract you guys from getting away from God. Be careful with this. I'm telling you. That's why it's even like I have to fast for like literally maybe three to four days so I can actually hear him clearly because he's busy. He's trying to protect his children. No, but all everybody feel too prideful. Oh no, God this, God said this, God that. Especially something about Dubai. People in Dubai, man. Shame on you. For I am with you. Do not be... Do not be impatient because of the wicked or envious of those who do evil. Okay? This is important. Do not be impatient because of the wicked or envious of those who do evil. Okay? So this is another energy. Do not be some type of way about those who, who are doing well right now or doing, you know, making money and stuff like that or being normal, business as usual, travel, whatever. There, Do not. This is what he's saying. Stop watching them. Block them, unfollow. I'm telling you, the enemy is actually doing this on purpose so that you feel this energy. This is a dark, low vibrational energy that these people are trying to make you feel guilty or make you feel in, in, that it's okay to ignore what's going on in the world. Do you understand? That's evil. They have evil in their heart. They have a dark heart, but they pretend and fake that they care about you, about their communities. They don't care about their communities if they don't care about actually the little people, the poor people, the people who are dealing with homelessness right now, stuck in the rain. Do you know it's winter right now in the north? Do you know it's winter over there? Did you know that? That they don't have clothes? That there's children in sandals right now? Today was raining like crazy. We have access to that because we see them. We see the people, the journalists who are in the ground. We see everything. Do you see why they're trying to censor? They're trying to, right? They don't want you to see what they're doing to these people. And then literally risking their life to show it to us. And we have the audacity to not do anything. Yo. And that too, that's what he keeps saying. I give them those platforms. I give them those platforms. He gave you those platforms. Those platforms that you guys have right now, they're not yours. Okay, I'm going to let you enjoy that. Envious of those who do evil, for they will soon be cut down like grass. I repeat, for they will soon be cut down like grass or dust and weather away. Trust in me and do good. You will do well in the land and be fed. Truth, delight in me, God, the Lord. Okay? He gets, he asks me to, to, to look, to put a line to it. Fed truth. He wants to be, you guys to be fed true. And this is what I'm doing by gathering all the information that he tells me to gather, giving, you know, spreading the word, spreading as much as I can, and then come here and do that. Okay. 
I'm going to try to do as much as I can during this time, all right? But we are going to, not going to stop, okay? We're going to continue into the ceasefire. And even then, after the permanent ceasefire, we have to make sure that Palestinians are protected. We have to make sure that they get their land back. And we have to make sure that these people, justice, uh, okay? We have to make sure of that. Now, he will grant you the desires of your heart, okay? Commit and trust in him. Do not fret on those who prosper on their ways or those who or those who carry out evil plans, okay? Cease from cease, like he says cease or ease or cease from anger. I had to look it up because I don't use that type of word. Cease like S E E S, cease from anger and forsake wrath. Okay, like no take your vengeance. Remember, God is a God of vengeance. We don't are supposed to do anything. The Palestinian, the people from Congo, the people from Sudan, they know this. Okay, they know that dying as a mar martyr and it's not, you know, it's not fair, obviously, but they know that they have a specific place in heaven right now. They know in the spiritual realm, they know that they ascended already here in the physical so that in the heaven, they get everything they want. They know that this is just temporary. Okay. That's real bravery and courageous, okay? For those who wanted to be spiritual and get into spirituality, this is it. This is why a lot of people step out and then start pretending and faking, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, because when the real world comes in, they're nowhere to be found, you know what I'm saying? Do not fret as it leads to evil doing. Do not fret when it leads to evil doing, okay? For the evil doers will be cut off. I will repeat, for the evildoers will be cut off. But those who wait for the Lord shall inherit the land. Those who wait for the Lord shall inherit the land. Because in just a little while, the wicked will be no more. Because in just a little while, the wicked will be no more. Okay? Now, the last thing he said, it says, it is better to be it is better to have little. This is for the people who are, who think in some type of way that you're feeling like, all oh, these people are doing better. Maybe, you know, maybe you were in the fight in the beginning and then you got tired. You decided to do the, uh, you know, go back into business as usual and stuff like that. And you're kind of like, oh, I don't know if I should go back. It's okay. It doesn't matter. Go back. I'm not here to judge you and we're not here to judge you. We need as much people as we can. Okay. This is a collective work we need everyone okay well we've been talking about it for the past years the light workers been talking about it the big ascension and the big new earth and consciousness and christ consciousness this is it this is the time that you need to show up for other people well you thought it was for, for you you thought it was for your community right you thought it was for people to look just like you right no don't put god in a box he never asked you for that that means you're attached to your ways. That's wicked. That's evil, right? Now, he said, it is better to have little and be righteous than to have the riches of many sinners. <coughs> yeah? <coughs> they don't want me to tell you this. They don't want me. I'm telling you. It is better... Not to my cat has been watching my window all day. We are as energy all day. Again, that's why I do my prayers and stuff like that. Because we know the monitoring spirits as well, right? We know that these people are wicked as fuck, okay? Now, it is better to have literal and be righteous than to have riches of many sinners, okay? So most of the people that you're watching, they're having riches and stuff like that. Oh, got this, got that. It's just a bunch of sinners, Bunch of demons helping each other and ego each other, right? Not repenting, not doing the right thing. Literally, after they repent and they actually get into this fight, they can literally be saved, but they're not doing it. That's not our problem anymore. I am like done with these people. I'm just going to save as much people as I can. And I just, I'm not going to stop until the Palestine is free, Congo, Sudan, and all the other ones dealing with genocide. And that's just what it is. And it is what it is. Amen. Because they will be free in the name of Jesus. Amen. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken. 
but our Lord upholds the righteous. I don't know if this is a scripture. I don't know. I don't know. Don't quote me. I don't know if this is a scripture. We'll try to find it if it is. Okay. But he says, it is better to have little and be righteous than to have the richest of many sinners. And for the arms of the wicked shall be broken. Okay. So all those limbs, all those things that are broken right now, all those children dealing with broken bones, cutting off arms and stuff like that, that you guys are too uncomfortable to watch or too uncomfortable to see because your bigotry, your fascism, your white supremacy, your racism, you're one of the many demonic spirits that we keep telling you this is why it's important to the colonize because you cannot do this real spiritual work without the colonize it because this is why. He's showing you why. This is why it's important because when times like this come, you will stay silent and silence is violence. Okay? So, but our Lord upholds the righteous. So you know who the righteous energy is. We've been telling you for many months now. It's been two months. Literally, we are in 67 days right now. And they've been dealing with 60, 67 plus 75 years. Okay? Today, beautiful indigenous community have uh, helped me out with this and allow me to understand that this type of revolution, they have been dealing it for 400 years. So this is not new to them. So this is why... We cannot get tired. We have to keep going, okay? This is going to take all of us, but obviously all the righteous ones. Now, keep posting, keep talking about Palestine. Look, I put a reminder, continue sharing the truth, ceasefire now, free Palestine and the others, okay? Continue doing this work because it is necessary. I love you guys. Make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe. Make sure that you support the communities and uh, those who are in this video, okay? Uh, keep doing what you got to do, free Palestine, and Congo, Sudan, Puerto Rico, Afghanistan, Yemen, absolutely Yemen, okay, and all the other ones dealing with genocide, okay, do not stay silent, okay, be on the right side of history, literally, the righteous one, okay, because when you're doing that, you're protected, those people, they're silent, they're not, the enemy already is fooling them already, they think that they're protected by angels. They think they're protected by God. They can hear God. They're not hearing nobody. That door has been shut and they know it. So don't fall in the, don't fall in their trap. Okay. I love you guys. Be good and free Palestine.